The ESFJ, or the attendant, primarily navigate the world through the emotions of others. And what could be better than serving up smiles? This is supplemented by their personal experience. Right. Oh. Right. This combination leads the ESFJ to utilize their past experiences in order to best accommodate the feelings of others. Oh yeah, I thought we'd start off with soup and a light salad, and then see how we feel after that. They can be the most sweetest and caring people, always willing to help out. Ah, how about I fix you some cocoa? No way, cocoa's for wusses. Well sir, if you change your mind, it's on the windowsill. But they can also be overbearing, getting too involved in the details of others' personal lives. Do you know what today is? A noise Squidward day. Ah, no, silly. That's on the 15th. The weak points of the ESFJ are introverted intuition and extroverted thinking. Their trickster function being introverted intuition, they are not exactly the best when it comes to pattern recognition or predicting the future. The peasant at the diner. He didn't pay his check. Each new day is a blessing to the ESFJ. Their demon function being extroverted thinking, they may be unaware of how others think of them. I'm sure we're all going to be very good friends. That's slightly. <laughs> or have an allergy to empirical evidence. This is a lie. It's not a lie. I saw him. I fought him. Detention, Mr. Potter! In tandem, these two weak points have led to the stereotype that the ESFJ is the Karen, the person who gets too caught up in irrelevant details and does not understand the bigger picture. Being holier than thou, yet not considering upcoming events or the facts of the situation. Look, Princess, you're not making my job any easier. Well, I'm sorry, but your job is not my problem. The strong points of the ESFJ are extroverted feeling and introverted sensing. They learn from personal experience, but more importantly, they are fantastic at reading the emotions of others. What kind of monsters are we? That poor creature came to us in his hour of need, and we failed him. Squidward's always been there for us when it was convenient for him. The archetype of the ESFJ tends to be that of the mother, or a motherly figure, at the least. Their relationship to the other characters is almost always revolving around being in a role of service. But by no means are they enslaved, even if from the outside, they appear to be exploited. Hear that, Squidward? We get to keep working and working and working without ever having to go home! No, the ESFJ often enthusiastically embraces this role, often so giddy and excitable about their lot in life that it seems overly saccharine and sickening to those around them. And what could be better than serving up smiles? Being dead, or anything else! The character arc for the ESFJ involves discovering an identity. I lost something I couldn't live without! My identity! Involves discovering an identity beyond simply their role in relationship to others. So yeah, I'm a kid, and I'm also a goofball, and a wingnut, and a knucklehead McSpazitron! The attendant is always doing their best to make sure everyone's needs are met. Oh, ice cream sandwich taste test! That was our biggest fight. 